back exercises. You are working out on your back, right? You're not? Hi, and welcome to E3 Strength. My name is Earl, and if you're anything like me, when you first started working out, you didn't really understand what was going on back there or why you should work it. And if you did start working your back, you probably just did exercises you saw on YouTube, men's health, woman's health, or any other fitness related resource that you're using to learn how to get in shape. Well, now we're telling you why, when, where, and more than that, we're gonna speed up the process and make working these massive muscles much more efficient and much more effective so that you can get results. Let's get started. We're gonna talk about three different angles, incline, neutral, and a decline angle, all of which provide different benefits, but how to vary up your grip so that you get the most out of each movement. Let's start with the incline. Here at E3, we have a double cable cross. That's why you see me in this crazy little shaded area inside of our rogue system, because that's where we keep our double cable cross. We don't use traditional machines like lat pull downs or row machines, because a cable cross, A, can do everything and save us some space, but B, you can adjust this to fit your height, your weight, etc. In a traditional gym, most machines are fitted to somebody between 185 and 225, who is a male, approximately 5'10 to 6'1. I'm none of those things. Therefore, this is the best thing for me, and it just happens to be the best thing for your average client. So let's go over the incline grip. Incline is specific to the lats. You're thinking, when you think incline, you think lat pull down. But we don't do a traditional lat pull down because a lat pull down locks your legs in, which incentivizes you or puts you in a position to where you probably want to use more weight than you should. It's a great way to get an injury. Also, most people are doing a lat or a wide grip. We're not going to do that. We're going to use a close grip, which most people use to target their middle back because the fact that we're already reaching overhead naturally targets the lats. So we might as well engage the middle back so we can work everything all at once. The grip targets the specific area, and then the angle targets a different area. So we can get two things done at once. Efficiency, that's why you hire a personal trainer, that's why you watch videos like this. So let's go ahead and look at what this should look like. When you have a seat down at your cable cross, your pulley is at its highest position, and you have two handles or a fixed handle with two grips very close. Doesn't matter how you do it. But no matter what you do, you want to get your chest up almost like you're leaning back. But more than you're leaning back, you're actually pushing your chest forward. This is a natural retracted position. From here, you're going to pull this in by squeezing your shoulder blades together, and then you follow through with your arms. So it's not a pull down, because when you pull, you pull your arms. You're retracting your back and following through. Now, why would you do a single arm version of this? Well, very simply, if I were to go ahead and reach overhead with both arms, I can only reach this high. But if I reach with one arm, because my rib cage can articulate due to my lats and my obliques, I'm going to get a bigger stretch, particularly out of my lats. And that's what we're looking to target with an inclined angle. The grip helps to target the middle back, again, providing overall efficiency. So if we reduce down to one handle and do the same exact thing, we should get a very, very similar but overemphasized result here in the lats. So this is what we want our lat pull down to look like. The next angle we have is a neutral angle, meaning one that's going to be in line with the middle of the back, the traps, and the middle of the lats. And that's going to be something in the, in the vicinity of your sternum. So this hangs down a little bit, so it's actually a little bit lower when you see it here, but when I put some tension on it, it's going to be just below my chest. Whenever you're doing a neutral pull, or just a pull in general, you always want to be aiming for this area, because anything higher is going to put an anterior tilt on your shoulder. Again, shoulder-related injuries. A lot of the injuries that you have related to your shoulder happen from pulling exercises. Most people don't think about it, but it's usually the finishing of the motion that causes this. So we want to be very specific as to where you pull toward, and then not over protracting like we talked about a few minutes ago. So this one's going to have to be standing for me to do it properly. Now, when we go with the wide grip, that's going to limit the range that I can pull from. But because I'm pulling from a neutral height, I'm not targeting the lats as much as I was inclined. Therefore, I naturally have more middle back here. So I'm going to go to a wider grip to promote more lats. Because again, we want to work more of, this, of all of the muscles at once so I can get in, get out, and get on my day. Because I don't want to spend all day in the gym. Oh wait, I actually do. You don't want to spend all day in the gym. I do. 
different story. But you get the gist. So once we have our underhanded grip, retract first, follow through. And because we have a limited range of motion compared to our last angle, this looks like an even shorter range of motion. Now once we're in single arm, there's nothing to promote any width. So what can we do with a neutral grip, single arm, to promote the lats? We're going to rotate underhanded, which causes the elbow to internally rotate. And any time that you bring your elbow into your body, not only does your chest fire, but all of your lats, which happens to be the biggest muscle in your body, turn on and fire as well. So internal rotation is going to promote more of your lats. All right, you see me getting low to get leverage. But from here, my, my angle and my tension is exactly in line with my 8th through 12th rib, which is below my chest, targeting the lats. Already, without even doing anything, my lats are tensed. And as I rotate in and under, I get a very, very tight squeeze. And I feel it more down here below the shoulder blade than you would traditionally with just about any exercise. So a full rotation is awesome. Really gets a ton of activation back here with little to no range of motion on the arm. Because remember, the focus is right here. This is where you're getting most of your contraction done. The last angle we have, which is going to evolve another funny grip, is going to be your decline angle. Most people think it, because you're pulling up, it's going to end up targeting the upper traps. So most folks associate incline with lats, neutral with middle back, and decline with the upper traps. And I might be leaving out a few things there in terms of your perspective, but that's a general trend that we see in, let's just say, a goal to gym. All right, so if that's the case, let's debunk that. A rope grip is extremely beneficial for pulling exercises because when you have a hammer grip, you naturally have tension in the bottom of your biceps or your lower biceps tendon, which causes the biceps to be a main pulling muscle, and it should be, right? Your triceps push, your biceps pull. But we want to take the arms out of it and get as much out of the back. How do we do that? By putting our wrist into extension, we can't flex the bicep tendon as much, therefore we deactivate the bicep, turning on what's directly behind my line of force, which would be my lats. Also, the fact that I can spread this handle out and kind of flare my elbows at 45 degrees will then put my elbows directly in line with that middle part of my lats that we talked about just a second ago. This, that's why this grip is extremely beneficial, yet highly underused at this angle. You've got to hinge your hips back. So knowing a deadlift is really pretty helpful for this one. But in hinging my hips, you'll see that I'm not really drawing my knees forward, so there's no tension in my quads, no tension in my knees. All my tension, hamstrings, glutes, and if you can see, my back is nice and straight. As I retract and squeeze, I can flare my hands apart, which points my elbows out, and gives me a nice flex throughout my entire middle back. Now lastly, we can turn this same grip into a single arm. And why is that important? Well, even though we're at an angle that most people consider upper traps or middle back, we're using the rope to target the lats. Well, what is one thing that will help you to, to get your lats involved? Increased range of motion. We've already mentioned that when you're kneeling and you reach up with one arm, you can reach much higher, right? Right. So if that's the case, you should be able to reach forward just a little bit more without putting your shoulder into an unsafe protraction. So you can do just one arm at a time, hinge in the hips back, just like we talked about, retract and squeeze. Again, looks like a small range of motion, but I'm getting more of a stretch and I'm feeling actually a little bit up higher into my lats, closer to my shoulder blade than I felt on the previous contraction using two arms. So again, there is a reason to do single arm. There's a reason to do both. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share. Actually send this video to somebody who might use it. Do you have a friend that works out a lot or a friend who needs to work out a lot? Send them a link. We have tons of videos and we only do just to help you. We want nothing in return. All that you can do is use this to help yourself or help others. That's what we're about and we'd love for you to do the same. In the meantime, hit us up on social media at E3Strength and let us know what questions you have. Info at E3Strength.com. Until the next time, have a great day.